Hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'll be asking the questions today. <laughs> you know what? That's fine. I don't know how I can handle them. <laughs> questions are hard. They really are. I don't know how you do this. I don't really. I don't do it well. I'm trying, though. My job to continuously come up with questions, and, and every now and then when I have to be on the other side, it's really uncomfortable. So I And I don't know, to be in a press day like you are, I feel for you. My heart goes out to you. This is a, uh, a weird junket. It's like a, you don't get to see anyone. It's kind of <laughs> cool, though. That's why I like it. It's, you know, for, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to borrow this, for, for an anti-socialite who, li- <laughs> who works in in media and likes to be around things like that, but also likes to be in a room by myself with that record. I, you know, I've been listening, I guess, since I got the link uh, for the last couple of days, and I feel like I'm really having a good time with this, and, and I'm dancing around and smiling, and then when I finally do stop to listen to the lyrics, I realize that I've I've been really enjoying someone's heartbreak to... That's fine. That's a, the idea. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, I won't pry too much, but am I, am I enjoying your heartbreak or a really great fiction piece? I ha- sadly have to say it's a fictional narrative, but um, is it more exciting if I say it's my life? Because I'm sure I could come up with something juicy. <laughs> I don't know that it is. I, I sort of, for once, enjoy the fiction piece because you've crafted something really <laughs> cool. Um, I think, you know, the feelings are quite real. I've, I was channeling some, some energy, but yeah, it wasn't, uh, I have not, you know, drowned or anything like that. <laughs> I guess I didn't mean to go completely overboard with that. I did that again. I didn't mean to. No <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> I, I guess, I mean, that's the thing about writing a piece like this. And, and I think maybe it was used, the phrase was used in the press release, too, about where fantasy meets reality. And I don't know, there's a story about you heading to an island to do this, right? Yes, I was exiled to Toronto Island via ferry. <laughs> Brought a bunch of gear on there uh, on sort of like a trolley wheelbarrow thing and set up a PA in a large open concept classroom. And just sort of had like a private concert for myself. <laughs> Many nights, probably like two weeks. But uh, yeah, during the day, I could just like walk along the shore and think of melodies or bike around the island with headphones in, which is not really something I advise anyone to do in the city. (laughs) Um, So why the island, though? Why the why? But why why cast away yourself? Well, I realized when we were doing all this traveling that I had written a lot of songs in isolation on islands, and so I thought this would be the best way for me to do that again without necessarily flying to, like, say, Nova Scotia. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was, you know, I think it was successful. I, I came up with some ideas that I'm, you know, I feel good about, and some that didn't get used, of course, which is the way with making records, but mm-hmm. it's helpful. That word, especially isolation, because there's something about that in the lyrics. I mean, you know, if this is a, a breakup album, fiction, fictionalized as it is, it, it does seem to come from a place of um, loneliness is not the word. And, and, and I'll just reuse isolation again. And, you know, and, and the more I think about that, it seems like given where you are in your career at this point in, in the cycle, like, I don't know, do you feel like you spend your, a lot of your life like that? I mean, I, I know what tour bus life can be like and... <laughs> I haven't been on a bus with Always yet. I'm not sure if that's in the works, but I I enjoy being alone. I I don't usually spend a whole lot of time alone when we're traveling and playing shows and and doing sessions and things like that. But um, I really do like to just be bored and to be creative. That's kind of how I spent my childhood, and it's a comfort zone for me. Do you think of it as a concept record in that way? Yeah, that's fair to say. It's it's something I can draw from. I mean, I've gone through things in life that I can and draw from those experiences in order to channel some sort of, um, you know, emotional content into into writing like pop songs. Um, and I, I've always enjoyed putting uh, dark subject matter into a sparkly three minute, 15 second pop song. <laughs> I think there's a lot to be said about, you know, the pop version, the pop side of the, all of this, because, uh, and I guess that's the other part of the story. Um, you're searching for, you know, you, you were listening, I guess, to a lot of your favorite LPs as the story went uh, in, in these mornings. And to me, that always felt like, uh, so I'm not a songwriter, but that always felt dangerous. Like if you're listening to a lot of music as you're writing music, I mean, how, you know, what's the line before that music starts to seep in? And you're like, no, I can't sing that. That's that song. That's whatever that is. <laughs> I don't know how much melody crossover is in the record. Uh, I'm not going to be the one to point that out either (laughs) on air, but um, (laughs) I think you pick up little affectations from people and and ways of playing guitar lines and sort of key change ideas, tone. 
phones, delivery, things like that. I, I'm really fascinated by the idea of influence and how it affects you and whether or not it actually does. Right, and you didn't find that it completely did then? I don't know. I try to, I try to channel that in some parts of, of this project, and, and I think that eventually it ends up sounding like our band. Yeah, well, in it does. the end, yeah. yeah. So I, I feel like it's a healthy thing to do. And I should point out, there was never a moment when I listened to this and I went, "Oh yeah, that's totally that's." <laughs> <laughs> sort of just wondering Agreed. how the yeah, just sort of wondering how the writer, you know, kind of uh, hears it because I know that when you when you do record something, you sort of hear it completely different, especially when you're you know, oh, I recorded the bass for this thing, and suddenly it's a bass heavy song for you or something. So. <laughs> It's it. very hard to be objective about your own music. Sometimes we have some friends from where uh, we come from in the east coast of Canada that we'll send things to, and, and they're very straight and always have been, so they'll tell you if something's garbage. We've used them sort of like our little secret weapon. Right in the middle of the record, and, and it's probably one of my favorite parts, is you get the song Hey and, and Lollipop, and I don't know, everything turns into a little bit more hard driving. There's a great lead going on at Hey, and I don't know what's happening there. I mean, is it fair to say there, there's a punkier movement happening uh, right, right kind of as the centerpiece? We do have a fair amount of energy live. I, I definitely hear that often that our uh, self-titled is a little bit more subdued than our concerts. But yeah, we're drawn to like bands like Royal Headache or, you know, the Ramones or, you know, Buzzcocks. Mm. Bands like that. I'm not saying that we sound like those bands, but we listen to a fair amount of that, and it's fun to see people moving around in the audience to certain things. So when you go into it, do you like say, "Oh, I need to write something like that because maybe this song isn't, you know, these this group of songs are too laid back." It all depends on where the melody starts, but yeah, I don't, I don't have a a quota for. <laughs> sad songs versus uh, more peppy ones. Yeah. It just sort of ended up like that. And we ha- we had a few other songs that um, didn't get on the record, but these ones all sort of fit together in a nice way. Yeah, well, I, I love how it's all fit together. I, I love this story. I loved your first record. I like this one even more. And I know that's oh, sort of always you. the goal. And and I'm sure it's also been talked about, but the fact that you got Norman Blake on there helping them out, helping you guys out, that's uh, that's fantastic. I'm a, I'm a fanny, so it's... Oh, he was uh, so yeah. kind. It's a little bit bizarre. Like he, he's very—you um, don't suspect he's in a really huge band. No, that's true. Uh, well, that was fun. It was—it was great talking to you. I can't wait to see you guys uh, take this one out on the road and and for the release and everything. I, I do love it so much. So thank you for the conversation. Thanks for listening to the record. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye.